the Comox Valley, located on the traditional unceded territory of the Comox First Nation, the traditional keepers of this land. Beautifully located between mountains and the ocean in the middle of Vancouver Island in Canada's most western province of British Columbia. Hi, I'm Allison Leet, and I'm an actor, director, and storyteller located here in the Comox Valley. And this is Creating Community. Follow along as we meet the members of Courtney Little Theatre while they work towards mounting their winter production of Cinderella. We will learn what it takes to bring a show to life and about the types of roles required to make it happen. Let's go behind the curtain to discover the magic and the wonder that lies here. Welcome to my community. The world's a stage and I'm grateful that you taught me how to be a part of something bigger than myself. That every role's important from the lead to the supporting. So much of who I am and who I try to be is thanks to my community. Thanks to my community. Sets help to transport the cast, crew, and audience members to the world of the story. Bruce Taylor and his team of volunteers built the set for Cinderella and transformed the bear stage into Cinderella's humble home, the grand staircase at the ball, and the gardens under the midnight moon. Talking to Bruce, we learn about the intricacies of his work. Uh, on Cinderella, I was asked to be the uh, head of set building. I was in charge of a group of volunteers who come together uh, probably, uh, certainly two months, perhaps two and a half months before the actual production. And our job is to liaise between the set designer and the director to produce a set that works for everyone. The designer comes in typically with a pretty good idea of what they want and we have to sit down and coordinate uh, safety, the actual construction. There is certainly a consideration of the cost of the set, and there's always a tremendous amount of uh, improvisation. We, we are, one of the things that I find really, really interesting about this job is having to come up with ideas that work uh, on theater that uh, some of the designers come in with very, very exotic ideas. And it's really impressive trying to figure out how to make it work. Uh, there's a large group of different uh, people within the community. Uh, very, very rarely uh, will they have an outside. The, believe it or not, the designer for Cinderella was an outside uh, the Valley person. But typically, uh, community members. Um, they vary widely from uh, graphic design, uh, theater people, through local home builders, believe it or not, uh, through occasionally the director themselves. Uh, the set designer for Cinderella was actually the daughter of the uh, director herself. So that, interestingly enough, added a whole new dynamic. Oh boy. Um, let me tell you a couple of things. I think probably the hardest part of the job is trying to make sure that I can keep everybody uh, with their vision in mind. I, I, my job is to make sure their vision comes to the stage. It's not to try to uh, impress everybody with my set construction skills. It's to make the designer and the director. One thing that many of the audiences won't know is that typically the set builders, our rule is to listen to the set designer right up until about three weeks before the production. If there's any real decisions to be made, we'll go to the designer. At that point, I, my job is to go to the designer and say, that's been great, but I'm knowing, now going to start listening to the director. And uh, Occasionally that will cause some friction, um, but usually we're able to, uh, to work through it. 
And uh, I've been quite pleased with, you know, it, it's often people have very, very real ideas of what they want to see on the stage. And usually I think it works out quite well. My family are bridge builders from back in Ontario. So I have a, I have a background in construction, although uh, I hadn't, I've never worked in, I, I taught high school physics for years and never particularly had anything to do with the arts community. So um, like I've built homes, I've built bridges in that sense. When I retired, when I was approaching retirement, I'd always admired the work that Laurie Maisie did uh, within the school with, at Vanier. And so I went to her and said, is there anything you know, I could do to help support your work? And she asked me if I'd be interested in building sets. And I said, well, I'll give it a try. So that was uh, 15 years ago. And since then, it's been uh, one thing after another. Uh, I will say this, set, design, or set construction is a substantially different animal than uh, any other, like home construction or bridge construction. It is, it is endlessly fascinating. The, the challenges are nonstop. Um, you, anybody who wants to get into set building, you will never ever be bored. I can promise you that because uh, you, might be, you might be under pressure, you might be tense, but you'll never be bored. And that's been wonderful for me. Uh, the, first, the first one that I really, really was engaged in was Les Mis, uh, which was a C CYMC production. And, you know, I will tell you a little anecdote. Uh, uh, I had taught a number of students, and of course I, I met a numerous parents uh, at Vanier. And I went into a Les Mis meeting the last year I was, no, it was the first year I retired. And here was a mom who I just knew as, as mom. And then they said to her, we need 24 French military costumes. And she jots it down. And then they say, we need 17 peasant costumes. And she writes this down. And then a month later, this community member shows up. And she, like, she's wonderful. She's got these beautiful costumes designed. And I thought to myself, you know, this is, uh, I, I'm going to have to do a really good job here. So it was, it was really, really interesting doing Les Mis. That, that's the first one um, that I remember doing. It, it is an incredibly interesting job. Uh, we, we are typically, we receive a model, which is, uh, for the audience, it's much like a dollhouse. It's an exact 24 to 1 replica of the... Uh, stage, typically at Sid Williams, and the designer has built out of cardboard or styrofoam or little wooden blocks their uh, image of what the set should be. And then I will go away and spend uh, certainly two weeks, probably closer to three weeks, going over it, measuring everything, trying to figure out how we can build it, how we can make it safe, because for some of these productions, there's as many as 35 or 40 kids on the stage at once. There are weight-bearing issues. There are all kinds of safety issues. We've certainly had kids jumping off of uh, seven and a half foot balconies onto the stage. Um, fortunately, uh, we've, we've never had anybody seriously injured, but it is always a concern making sure that the stage is structurally sound and that it works for the kids moving around. This is, uh, was designed by Jay Crowder, uh, uh, one of the local set designers, and it's an exact replica of the Sid Williams Theater. And Jay brings this to us, made out of uh, hunks of scrap wood, cardboard, and styrofoam, and then we take the individual pieces and figure out how we're going to build them, how we're going to put them together, and how we're going to make them safe for the uh, kids in the theater. They have to be able to come on stage and work their magic. They have to be able to slide in various locations and out. And this then, he also gives us little people 
to make sure that they fit appropriately on the stage. To my mind, that's one of the real strengths of, uh, of this community and uh, of theater in general. Uh, I've worked for a number. I've worked for Rainbow, for CYMC, for Theater Works, for Three Dog, uh, Three Legged Dog. Of course, for Courtney Little Theater, I've done a number of things, and we are constantly um, able to borrow uh, virtually all. You won't you won't have seen it yet, but virtually all of the Cinderella set has gone on to Matilda. Now it's been transformed. You you might well you'll notice the Cinderella stairs there, but the rest of it has, uh, like I said, it's just been transformed into a Matilda set, and it will come back to CYMC again to go on to be used again and again. I, and having just said that, it, you'd be interested to know that the Little Mermaid set went on to Victoria and was used there and then to uh, Abbotsford. So that, you know, the uh, clamshell has been uh, virtually all over the province. And that's one of the real strengths that we can, of course, as you say, the budgets are limited, Not maybe not so much for CLT, but many of the other groups run on a shoestring budget. And uh, I think it's a real strength that we're able to share those uh, resources. There's a large group of people, uh, primarily retired, but not exclusively. They, are, uh, they range in abilities, but never in enthusiasm. They, uh, they love to come and help. It's a very casual, uh, I tell you one of the nice things for the volunteers and, and perhaps for myself as well, is when you go to build a set, it's, it's episodic. The, the set will be done when the show opens. And then if you want to, you can go like, you know, you can go sailing or you can go cycling in Europe and you can say no to the next set. So that's a real benefit for volunteers that they can come in and go out. There is, as I said, and you know something else, there's something for everyone. When people come to me, I say, there's a job for you. Uh, it may be technical. Uh, the gentleman who built the sweeping Cinderella stairs was a, uh, a very talented person, but there's also roles for, you know, all kinds of people doing jobs that aren't as challenging. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I'm very, very impressed with the volunteers. Uh, it's a wide range of people. We have a very, very strong set of volunteers within this community. This will surprise you. I, I, worked, I worked with uh, 17 and 18 year olds my whole life, 16, 17, 18 year olds. And uh, as I said, I taught physics and, and I, had, I had a really, really nice job. I taught uh, highly uh, intelligent kids, kids who were motivated, and, and then I, I ended up working with theater kids, and I realized how important it is to have a theater space for a group of people. I see these kids in theater, and I'll tell you, what inspires me is the way these kids are transformed by theater. They, they go from being, uh, not, not shy, but they become themselves. It's not just the people on the stage. Like I have stood back there and watched the theater production kids and they are transformed as well. They become more than they ever have been in the past. And oddly enough, I had a, uh, a lady who would be, she's gotta be 32, come to me and say, Theater was what saved me. You know, theater is what made me who I am today. And, and I, I agreed with her. You know, that's what inspires me. I think probably the thing that I would say is it, it's been really, really interesting that, as I, as I mentioned earlier, I started this uh, when I retired. And it's been wonderful. It's given me something new to work with, something new to try. And I think the, the most important thing is the way that it's, uh, 
I, one of the one of the key things is being able to work with people of many ages. A lot a lot of retired people I find or I feel end up living just with retired people. And this has been very, very nice to work in a broad community where a wide diversity of uh, people, all of whom bring their strengths to the group. I think there's two different aspects to, to the question that you've asked. Um, one of the things, of course, is the people within the group, the actors, the uh, volunteers, uh, all of them are certainly uh, changed by the group dynamic, by the idea of a joint effort coming to fruition. The other thing, though, I would mention is I have had numerous people from within the community come and tell me how much they appreciate uh, community theater and uh, community theater productions. Not only the Christmas pantomimes and the kids' theaters, but also the more challenging pieces that everybody does. It just, it makes the community far more rich. You know, the first thing I tell them, and I think that this is crucial, I do tell everybody this, is you don't have to be on the stage. That there is a spot for you within community theater. There's, there's the offstage roles, there's the set building roles and, and costumes and, and all of that. And there is a role for you in community theater and, and you will enjoy it. You will certainly find it uh, worthwhile. Bruce and his team work hard behind the scenes, ensuring the vision of the director and designer come to life, all while creating a safe environment for the cast to play. They put in hours of work to create the world you see in front of you and show us that skills of all types are required and welcomed in community theatre. We thought that we were only learning how to entertain But growing up I've realized just how much more we gain. The world's the stage and I'm lucky that you taught me how to be a part of something bigger than myself That every role's important from the lead to the supporting So much of who I am and who I try to be Is thanks to my community Thanks to my community